Oh, no, 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 no. Putting mayo in rice. This is disgusting. Who put mayo? Yokuzo kiite kuremashita. Okotai shimashou. Chahansa. But first, a word from today's sponsor, Ridge.com slash Chef PK. Ridge Wallet is one of the best wallets out there, made of premium metals like this beautiful burnt titanium. You're probably still carrying around your Marvel's Avengers wallet filled with who knows what. How did Rindo get back into this wallet? You can't even take her out of this thing. It's like a bottomless pit of nothing. Why do you have a shopping list from four videos ago? Costco business membership? We have that executive now. There is no way that this fat Hulk-sized wallet made of plastic and pleather is going to protect America's Not only will your titanium Ridge wallet protect America's it also holds up to 12 cards with cash and doesn't get in the way of spandex. Head over to ridge.com slash chef PK and use chef PK at checkout for 10% off. For the dong po pork, I am using the walks of life recipe. If you want to check it out, check out the link in the description below. I'm using about two pounds worth of pork belly that I'm cutting into six even-ish pieces. And I say even-ish because the tail was a little bit smaller. Now you're also going to need one bunch of green onions and about a two inch piece worth of ginger. For your green onions, go ahead and cut them in half and trim them up just a little bit. And then for the ginger, you're only going to need that two inch piece. Go ahead and peel it with a spoon and then get some really thin slices out of this. Now we are going to blanch the pork for about 30 to 40 seconds just to remove any scum off of this. So just bring some water to a boil, drop your pork in and then rinse off the pork. Now in that same pot after cleaning it, go ahead and lay a bed of green onions down followed by your ginger. Now go ahead and place the pork skin side down so that way it's touching all the ginger and the onions. Now the magical flavors from this come from this Zhaojing wine and we are going to need about two cups worth of this wine. It's gonna help sweeten it up and tenderize everything. You're also gonna need about four ounces worth of light soy sauce and about two ounces worth of dark soy sauce. Now I am going to sprinkle about three to four tablespoons worth of raw sugar on top of this to kind of give it a nice glaze. Throw a lid on it and bring this over to a medium high heat until it starts boiling. Once it starts that hard boil, immediately bring it down to a super, super low simmer and cook this for 90 minutes with the lid on. After 90 minutes, remove the lid and rotate your pork be careful though because it is starting to get tender and uh, chopsticks are a bad idea. Use tongs or something else to rotate the pork, then go ahead and cook it for another 90 minutes on that low heat with the lid on. After that second 90 minutes, our pork is ready to go. Look at that jiggle. Now I am going to be cooling down my pork. Yukihita probably didn't because it was a competition, but uh, I don't want to cut this while it's hot into small pieces. So I am going to cool this down overnight until we're ready to use it for fried rice the following day. After it's been cooled down, you can see how much of that fat has actually congealed. So just go ahead and clean up the pork, just a little bit of any onions, and remove the skin if you want to. And then we're going to cut this into small bite-sized pieces. The goal is to have these bits of pork the same size as the mirepoix later. So you do want to have somewhat of a small dice for this and make sure you're not handling it too much, otherwise that pork fat will start melting in your hands. Yes, it melts in your hands, not in your mouth. Or maybe it melts in your mouth too. The next thing we need to make is our green bean puriyal, except for, I don't know what's up with that green bean. Now go ahead and trim up your green beans. You can either use a knife for this or just peel them back with your hands, but remove the tops and the bottoms from your green beans. Once you have them all nice and cleaned up, we're gonna be blanching our green beans in some salted water. Go ahead and drop your green beans in for just about 45 seconds to a minute, not too long so they stay nice and crisp, and then immediately place them into an ice bath. This is gonna stop the cooking process immediately and allow you to have these really nice crisp green beans. Remove the green beans from the water after a minute or two and go Go ahead and start slicing these into really small little rounds. Again, you want all of your mise en place to have the same size, so that way when you dip your spoon into your rice, you're gonna get a little bit of everything. Now we're gonna start off with one teaspoon worth of chili flakes, one tablespoon worth of steamed lentils. Lucian, would you like some puriyal? Would you? It's not fancy feast. To this, we're gonna add one eighth of a teaspoon of turmeric, followed by one eighth of a teaspoon of mustard powder. We're also gonna add in about one eighth of a teaspoon of cumin and just a heavy pinch of salt, followed by a couple of cracks of black pepper. After you get all all of your seasoning in there, go ahead and saute this on that medium heat, nice and slow and low so you don't burn any of that good good. Now once you have everything else in there, drop in your green beans that you had cut previously and saute this up for just about a minute and a half. We are going to finally hit this with a little bit of dry, unsweetened coconut. Super important that it's unsweetened because you don't, you don't want the sweetness to come from this. After that's done, go ahead and place this into a bowl and there it is, our next piece of mise en place, the puriyal. 
Now for the aqua pazza or the crazy water, I am using about eight ounces worth of halibut, two tablespoons worth of fresh parsley, a half a teaspoon worth of chili flake, six cloves worth of sliced garlic, and then one cup of cherry tomatoes. I'm using cherry tomatoes because it won't create such a thick sauce because I really want it to be more liquid than anything. Add in about three ounces worth of olive oil to your pan over a low medium heat followed by your garlic and get those sweating just a little bit. You wanna make sure it's not too high so you don't start actually crisping up that garlic. Add in your cherry tomatoes very carefully because uh, they will start to splatter and attack you if you're not careful. Now you do want to blister these just a little bit, season it with a good amount of salt, and then finally we're going to add in four cups worth of water. Use the lid as a shield while adding in your water and then immediately place the lid back on, bringing this up to a nice hard simmer. You want to make sure you simmer this for about 25 minutes and re-season it if needed. This is when I'm going to add in my seasoned halibut. Season it with salt and black pepper and lay it down right on top of all your tomatoes in your sauce. After cooking this for about seven or eight minutes, we're going to go ahead and try to flip this with chopsticks again which is again is a bad idea but after getting it flipped and kind of tearing the fish which does taste pretty nice go ahead and add in your parsley and cook this for an additional four to five minutes until that fish is cooked after you have removed all of the fish essence go ahead and remove the fish out of your pan followed by straining out all of your crazy water. Now you can go ahead and toss this nut, <laughs> you crazy, this is gonna be so good with rice later. And there it is, our aqua pazza, the next piece of this crazy puzzle. See what I did there? Now for that secret sauce that everybody said WTF about. We're gonna take two eggs and realize that one of them was already cracked. So we're gonna take one egg and drop that into boiling water, grab a second egg out of the fridge and drop that into the boiling water. And we're gonna cook these for about six minutes to get a really nice soft yolk in the middle. Remove those from your water and add them to an ice bath immediately. After cooling them down for about five to seven minutes, we have this really beautiful soft boiled egg. Now take your soft boiled egg that you just cooked very carefully, peeled very carefully, crack it in half and uh, just, just just drop it, just drop it straight into your container because we're just gonna blend the crap out of this, let's be honest. Add your second egg to that same container and then we're gonna take a quarter cup or two ounces worth of cupai mayo and add this straight to our eggs. He mentioned special mayonnaise and there's nothing more special than cupai. Now season this with salt and black pepper and then start blending this with an immersion blender or a small blender if you have it. Once you get this nice and emulsified, you actually have this really, really beautiful mayo-y rich sauce kind of thing going on. It actually actually tastes like deviled eggs. I have to admit, it's really good. Just make sure you re-season it for salt and black pepper as needed and uh, smother this on a sandwich. Now we get to make our pilaf with that aqua pazza. You're gonna need about one tablespoon worth of butter and two cups worth of short grain rice with your aqua pazza. This may not be enough, so we may have to add some water to it. Take your big old dab of butter and add this to a heavy bottom sauce pot. He'd mentioned he'd use some sort of a clay pot, which I don't have, and we're just gonna use a heavy bottom pot instead. Once you have your butter almost all the way melted over a medium heat, add in your rice and start toasting this up just a little bit, coating all of that rice with that melted butter. Hit this with just a touch of salt and continue toasting this for about a total of five minutes. You don't want to go too long on your rice. Now after toasting it, add in your aqua pazza, making sure that the heat is still over a nice medium. You don't want this to come up to a boil too quickly. If the liquid doesn't come up to that first knuckle, add in just a little bit of water just until the liquid comes up to that first knuckle. You can alternatively make more aqua pazza, but I felt like this was strong enough as it is. Stir this just so that none of that rice sticks to the bottom. Due to the oil that's on the bottom, it will start to stick. After steaming this for 12 to 15 minutes, you'll start to see that no liquid is left and make sure you scrape the bottom of this pan. All of that oil will start to crisp up the rice on the bottom, which actually gives it this really beautiful color and texture. Now throw the lid back on it and steam it for an additional 10 minutes, then remove all of your rice and cool it down until you're ready to actually make your fried rice, which is gonna be, again, the following day. So this is a three day fried rice. Now the last thing we need to get together is our mirepoix. We're gonna need celery, carrots, and onions for this. You wanna slice your celery into small sticks and then do a small dice on your celery. You wanna do the same thing with a peeled carrot. You're not gonna need too much of either one. And a traditional French mirepoix typically has 25% celery, 25% carrot, and 50% worth of your onion. The biggest thing to make sure that you're doing is dicing these to about the same size so that way they all start to match up and they all fit on your spoon when you start to eat the fried rice. Once you have all of your celery, carrot, and onion, Cut up very beautifully, looks gorgeous. Just take all of it and put it into a bowl and just mix it. It's it's gonna be fine. You're just gonna throw this into your fried rice either way, right? Right? Just make sure it's even, you know, as even as you can get. After all of that work, we have everything finally assembled. Our beautiful mayonnaise, our beautiful pork, our beautiful pretty owl, our mirepoix. <laughs> 
Our aqua pots of rice peel off, and now we need a wok over high heat. Unfortunately, my heat doesn't get that high, so we're gonna try our best. Go ahead and season this with some oil and get that oil smoking and then dump the oil very carefully, not in a trash can because it'll melt your bag. Add in a little bit more oil and then add in about a quarter cup worth of your mirepoix first and get that going. You wanna start sweating those onions just so everything starts working. Add in about a quarter cup worth of your pork or more if you just wanna do more pork and start cooking up that pork until it starts to get nice and crispy and the fat starts to melt just a little bit. Once that starts to happen, realize that you do need better heat so remove the grate because we're doing this thing. We're just gonna go for it. Now that you have a little bit better heat, start to really cook up all of that good good in there. Once your pork gets nice and crispy, add in about two to three tablespoons of your proteal and get that going. You wanna make sure you don't cook this too long with the proteal in it because those green beans can soften up quite a bit. Now it's time to add our aqua pots of pilaf. I started off with adding in one cup worth of rice, realized I just wanted more rice, so I added in two cups. This is when you really have to start moving that wok to start getting all of the rice coated with all those beautiful fats. Hit this with just a little bit of salt as needed and continue to stir fry this until you start seeing some color. Once that happens, hit this with two tablespoons of your beautiful deviled egg mayonnaise, because that's basically what it is. Oh no, 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 no. Putting mayo in rice. This is disgusting. Who put mayo? <clears throat> well then, and continue to hit this over high heat. You wanna make sure it's constantly blasted over that high heat. All of that egg beautiful mayonnaise is gonna start to cover all of the rice. And after about two minutes after adding the mayo, place all of this into your bowl of choice or just, just start to eat it right away, but we're just gonna actually plate this thing. Press it down gently with your spoon, do the little flip de doo and nailed it. And now you have a beautiful bowl of rice on top of your plate, except for that little guy, just tuck that in. Add in a little bit of parsley for garnish if you would like. And there it is, our odorless fried rice from Food Wars. And there it is guys, Yukihita's odorless fried rice from the very last season of Food Wars. This is kind of a culmination of everything that he's really learned throughout his career on Food Wars. I say career, but he's still, still a student. But I'm not gonna lie, this looks pretty, like my mouth is watering looking at this right now. So, uh, I mean, look at, look at it. It breaks apart really nicely. Like you would think that it would actually kind of be a little soft, but we did we did cheat and cool it down. But um, let's even get a little bit of, oh God, it's so hot. Okay. Cheers. This is fantastic. He says odorless, but it's definitely not odorless. You really do smell the aqua pazza in there, which is that fish fume style sauce we had made to actually cook the rice. Then you get a little bit of spiciness from the puriyal, which were the green beans we had made. Then you get some of the sweetness from the mirepoix. You get this really beautiful fattiness and this richness from the pork. That mayonnaise gives it this little bit of almost a, devil, a deviled egg flavor to it. If that's, it's so, it's kind of weird. I'm kind of thrown off. It's really freaking good. It has this like, this bite that makes you want to eat more. And it's, it, it's rich but it doesn't feel overly heavy, if that makes sense as well. I re and that's probably coming from the green beans we had made. Let me know if you guys have ever made anything like this before. I would love to know. This is basically dirty rice to me, which dirty rice is just anything you have laying around mixed with rice. If you want to support the channel directly, check out my links below for my books. We are releasing volume one on paperback soon, and it is available digitally with volume two on the way. My name is Chef PK, get subscribed, and remember, keep playing with your food. And uh, Uncle Roger, it's only rice, why you have to get mad?